welcome to another Stats in 5 video, presented by the Statistics and Methods Lab at Arizona State University. My name is Ryan, and today we'll be talking about the correlation coefficient R. I'll be using the software package, SPSS, but the concepts regarding correlations we touch on today will apply to whatever statistics program your institution provides. For the purposes of this short video, we'll be restricting our conversation about correlations to Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, or Pearson's R. Note, however, that researchers use a variety of metrics to quantify linear relationships that will not be discussed here. Before we jump into calculating Pearson's R, let's talk about what a correlation is and what an R value means. When we use the term correlation, we're talking about a bivariate linear relationship. That is, the degree to which two variables, x and y, co-vary, that is constant, across the range of x. R values tell us two important elements of the relationship between two variables, the strength or magnitude of their relationship and the direction of their relationship. R can range from negative one to positive one, with negative one indicating a perfect inverse relationship and positive one indicating a perfect positive relationship. An R of zero indicates that there is absolutely no linear relationship between the two variables. Note that each of these non-zero R values has a positive or negative sign associated with it. The correlation coefficient sign indicates the direction of the relationship. To understand what correlations are, it can be helpful to examine scatter plots. Scatter plots show a dot for each participant, and the location of the dot with respect to the x and y axes is determined by the value the participant has on the x and y variables. For example, this point here represents a participant with a value of 5 on the x variable and a value of 8 on the y variable. In this scatter plot, we see that as the value of our x variable increases, the value of corresponding y values decrease. This is typical of an inverse correlation, which is indicated by the negative value in this example coefficient of negative 0.5. In general, it can be helpful to remember that for inverse or negative correlations, when one variable changes, the other changes in the opposite direction. Positive correlations are the opposite. When one variable changes, the other variable changes in the same direction. For example, we see here in this plot that as our x variable increases, the value of corresponding y values increase as well. Now that we've got the basics covered, let's walk through running and interpreting a correlation analysis in SPSS. I'll be using a fictitious data set that includes the variables grade point average and average time spent studying for 129 students. To have SPSS analyze whether two variables are correlated, first go to the Analyze menu, then down to Correlate, then click Bivariate. When the dialog box appears, we'll move our two variables over to the right-hand side. We want to check the Pearson box to get Pearson's R. If you wanted, you could check more than one of these boxes to get other coefficients. But for this video, we're just going to stick with Pearson. We are going to run a two-tailed test of significance. And we would like SPSS to flag any significant results. So I'll leave these options as they are. In the Options menu, you can ask SPSS to give you the mean and standard deviation of each variable. You can also ask for the sum of squares and cross products, which are involved in calculating Pearson's R. I'm going to check these boxes so we can check SPSS's answer against our own calculations. We can also specify whether we want SPSS to use listwise or pairwise deletion for dealing with participants with missing values. These options become more relevant when you include more than two variables in the correlation table, so we'll just leave it on listwise here. After selecting these options, I'm going to hit OK. Now we have our output from the correlation analysis. We ask for the mean and standard deviation, so those are given here and here. If you want to hear more about what these descriptive statistics mean, you can check out the SAMLAB descriptive statistics tutorial, which is available on our YouTube channel page. 
Now below this table are the results of our correlation analysis. Note that the table is segmented into a 2x2 two two square with a row and column for each variable, GPA and average number of hours studied. Note that the values on the diagonal represent the correlation of each variable with itself. Thus, it will always be one as it reflects a perfect correlation. Also note that the information below the diagonal is the same as the information above the diagonal. To find the Pearson's R for GPA and average number of hours studied, find the Pearson correlation row within one of the two variable rows, then follow it across to the other variable. The correlation coefficient here is equal to positive 0.722. The asterisk next to this value tells us that this correlation is statistically significant. Check the note beneath the correlation matrix to see which p-value threshold this asterisk is associated with. To find the exact p-value, look below the correlation coefficient. Here, the p-value 0 0.000 should be instead expressed as p is less than 0 0.001. Shown here is one formula for Pearson's R. It reads R is equal to the sum of the cross products divided by the product of the square roots of the sum of squares of each variable. You can compute each of these values by hand, but since SPSS gave them to us, let's plug them into the formula for R. Entering the sum of cross products of 71.088, and then the two sum of squares gives us this, and solving it gives us an R of 0.722. Notice that when we write a correlation coefficient, we don't put a zero to the left of the decimal because r can't exceed one. To wrap up, let's interpret the results of this correlation analysis. Our correlation coefficient of 0.722 is significant at the p is less than 0 0.001 level, indicating that there is a reliable linear relationship between students' hours spent studying and their GPAs. Notice that I didn't say anything about causality. If you haven't heard the famous aphorism yet, hear it now. Correlation does not equal causation. Although it may be tempting to assume that students' hours spent studying cause their GPAs to increase, it may instead be the case that having a high GPA causes students to study more, perhaps because they want to maintain their high marks. Alternatively, there could be a third variable that influences both students' GPAs and their study habits maybe motivation to succeed, or support at home. The point of this is just to say, we cannot answer the question of why there is a significant relationship from the correlation coefficient alone. I hope that this Stats in 5 tutorial on running and interpreting a correlation analysis has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us a line on Facebook, via email, or you can just come by the SAM lab at ASU West. We also have a presence online. If you're an ASU student, you can book a virtual appointment with us through our website. I've been Ryan, and I'll see you next time.